Welcome, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, Hope everyone's having a productive yet restful and balanced day um, during this time. Super excited to introduce today's rec session host. He is a veteran and pro in the game um, when it comes to paid advertisement and digital strategy. So today, Abu will lead our rec session, um, and he'll speak on how to grow creative sales using Facebook and Instagram ads. Let me get right into his introduction. Since 2011, Abu has trained CEOs, including ones in the $100 million investment fund, New Voices Foundation, which hosts brands like The Honey Pot, Mentic Cosmetics, Natural Club, BeautyCon, Afropunk, Heel House, um, on digital marketing and monetization. Helping more than 30,000 entrepreneurs, Abu is on a mission to empower entrepreneurs with the digital marketing skills in order to bootstrap their economy. Previously at a prominent digital marketing agency, he worked with and coached hundreds of clients and created campaigns that generated millions of visibility and sales. Abu currently runs his Power Your Launch Marketing Accelerator, which has helped over 800 women of color founders from various industries. He's the prominent industry expert around paid advertising and digital strategies. So without further ado, help me welcome my friend, a veteran in the game, Abu. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, everyone. How's it going? I'm super excited to be here um, currently. So anytime you see me look left, I'm watching the uh, YouTube feed to see if I can uh, capture any of your questions. Um, and if when I'm looking straight, that means I'm sort of looking through my slides. So what I'm going to do uh, during this training is I'm going to walk you all through how to think about utilizing paid advertisement to really get in front of your audience, let them know who you are, let them know what you do. And if you have something to sell to them, having that transaction so you're getting money for that effort that you're doing by getting in front of them. And so I'm gonna go through these slides. I'm gonna every now and then check for questions, but for the most part, I am going to get through this training and then open it up for question. I also have an exercise that we'll do together as well. So again, super excited to be here. Thank you to the REC team. Thank you to Taylor for putting this together. Thank you, Will and Dave and the entire rec team for you know always being super supportive of me uh, in my journey. Um, you know they've been there helping me utilize ads and always been able to support me having that community to, to lean on and go to. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And let me just one second. So I'm gonna share my screen and the, what you're currently seeing is uh, the presentation I put together and I'm gonna go back and forth where right? I'm watching YouTube. I am you know, watching here, so I'm, I'm doing, a, doing the most right now. But let's go ahead and get started in this training. So what this training is about, and I like calling all my trainings masterclasses, right? Because I want you to take uh, something away from our time together. So if you haven't done so already, please, right? I beg, go get a notebook because we're gonna be covering a lot of ground in a short amount of time, get a notebook and get ready to take notes. So this masterclass is around growth to scale, how to 10 times your sales using Instagram and Facebook ads. And what I like to tell people all the time is that, you know, you're already sitting on money. You just need to not be afraid to claim it, right? And reach out and say, you know what? Here's my product and I am going to sell it. Here's my service that I provide and I am going to sell it. So again, let's talk about, you know, how do you start making sales and how do you utilize platforms like Facebook, like Instagram, that you get in front of your audience. And before I get any further, you know, shout out to Rep Philly again. Um, I use their space all the time. This is me having a photo op. <laughs> you know, I got the merch on, I got the backdrop, you know. So, um, so yeah, thank you, Rep, for providing such a, a critical space, especially anytime when I'm visiting Philly, that's the place that I go to get really good work done and it's in a convenient location. So um, just thank you again. So again, I wanted to show you all my photo op. <laughs> so who are you? And I know we have a lot of different people on this call currently. You're a creative and that's what you call yourself. You call yourself a creator. Maybe you call yourself an entrepreneur. Maybe you call yourself you know, a business owner or a CEO. Um, either or you're someone that's in position that is trying to trade their time for money. You're trying to trade their skill set for money that's trying to trade what they've created for money. And so we have a lot of different creatives in this uh, group right now. So what I'm gonna say and, and why is it's important to you right now because you're in a position where 
you have the skill, you have this product, you have the service, but you know it doesn't matter how good that product is. It doesn't matter how great that service is that you provide. If you can't get in front of your audience and the, to the people that would potentially buy, then it doesn't really matter. You're, you're good and that's, that's a good thing, right? But we, we want to make sales in order to be in business, in order to monetize what we do, in order to do it for a repeated amount of length in order to replace our nine to five income, we need to be able to sell what we do for a transaction in order to get sales back. And so imagine if, right, and, and let's take this, especially in the, the environment that we're currently in right now, let's, let's imagine if you could sell your product without going anywhere. You could do it from your laptop, right? You could do it from your mobile device. Before it used to seem so far-fetched, but our current climate has brought us to this even further. Right, where you can't interact with individuals in person. And now you have to start being creative and say, well, how can I get in front of them? What are they already on? Where can I find my audience? So imagine if you could get in front of them without doing the most, right? Without vending, without posting on social media 24 seven, without going live every single day, without constantly having to write emails and pitch people. Imagine if you could just make sales by bypassing all of this. So does this sound familiar? Because maybe you're doing this now and this very manual, right? You're writing and drafting emails every single day. You're on Instagram posting five, 10 times a day and then commenting and engaging. Um, and then at the end of the month, you're just exhausted because you just did all this work, but all this work didn't equal the sales that you could potentially have earned. So you're not alone. I used to be in the same boat as you. Literally, I used to be in the same boat. These were my daily activities. I used to post on Instagram like two to three times a day, right? I was talking about myself. I used to go live. I used to email my list. I used to vend. I used to do speaking gigs in person. I used to do uh, services where I traded my time. And sometimes they led to sales, but other times they didn't lead to sales, right? So there's nothing wrong with working hard, but what are the other options, right? How are we and how do we begin working smarter? And so I, I told you that the, sometimes I didn't make sales. So the big question I ask here is how much time are you spending? Where are you spending that time? And the place that you're spending that time, are you getting an investment on your return for spending time there? So starting to ask the harder questions, right? And say, okay, I spent time here, but what actually came out of, came out of it? And so these are the questions as CEO, as an executive, right? As the entrepreneur, as the creative, you have to start asking yourselves these type of questions. So many of us are doing a lot of activities that are not leading to sales. Let's just face it, linking all the time is not leading to sales, right? So we're doing the most, but making less each time. Where, where do they do that, right? Where, where does that make sense? What world does that make sense? You're doing the most, right? But you're making less each time for the time that you're putting towards that. So here's what happened to me. I'm gonna share a little bit about my story and then we'll dive into the training even deeper and get a little bit more technical. We're gonna run through some ads. So we're gonna run through a live example of me putting together ads. Um, we're gonna target different audiences. But before we get there, let me just set the stage because there are people who, are, who have never heard of ads that are attending this right now. There are people who have tried ads and it didn't work out for them. And then there are people that have ran ads, it worked out, but they don't know what to do next. And so what I'm trying to do is cover all three bases. So bear with me. <laughs> so here's what happened to me. There was a time I was so consumed with growing my social media. I thought that the number of followers equal the number of sales that you had in your bank account. I know it sounds funny right now, but many of us still think like this. We think, oh, we need to grow our followers in order to make sales. But that's completely false. It wasn't until I had people who had a million following all the way up to 47 million who would reach out to me and say, hey, can you help us make sales? And I'm like, what are you talking about? You have a million people following you. You should have money in your bank account. And it wasn't true. How many of us saw the story of the Instagram star who with 2 million followers couldn't sell 36 t-shirts? Give me the number two in the, in the chat if you, if you uh, heard of this story, right? The Instagram star, 2 million followers, couldn't sell 36 t-shirts. And so this is a prime example of someone with a huge base, but couldn't really sell and convert and make customers. And so in order to make sales, this is the simple formula, right? You do not need to grow your following. 
You just need to be able to how to find your ideal audience and have something to sell to them, right? In order to make sales, we actually have to have something to sell, right? I know it sounds basic, but most people think that they could just wake up the next morning and all this money will just be knocking on their door and it doesn't work like that. So for those of you that don't know me, I run ads and I specialize in paid advertising. I don't do organic posts because you know you give Facebook the um, or whatever platform you're using the ability to reach as many audience. So a lot of times organic posts doesn't work as well. And so I use paid advertising because it's a pay to play market. And so I could get right in front of my audience. So this is a case study that I did last year in 2019, um, how I made $99,590 by spending less than $4,000 on ads. So that was my expense, $4,000, because this was a digital product. Notice how I didn't say, you know, I, you know, I made 99,000 and I spent 98,000 doing that. No, I spent 3,900. So profit was over $95,000. And then the next 30 days, I spent 7,000 to make $102,000. So here's how ads have been able to work for me, right? Like I'm a living proof, a living example. I'm someone that you probably know, you probably see like, yes, it works, like it works. <laughs> and what, whatever platform you're using, whether it's Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or Amazon, all these platforms have the capability to run paid advertising. And what paid advertising does is allows you to bypass the regular rules to get into a different set of rules that says, hey, just get in front of my audience. And so in this specific session, I'm only focusing on Facebook and Instagram ads. That's my zone of genius. That's what I know really, really well. And so as aspiring entrepreneurs and current entrepreneurs, you're probably wondering, right, how do I find my customers? How do I leverage these platforms and information for my business? How do I get my products, my services in front of my ideal customer? How do I create this marketing strategy that works for my business? How do I do this consistently? Because in order to be a real business, we need to drive consistent income. And you know, many of us are like, well, who got a you know, small loan of a million dollars I could borrow? And typically none of our parents have that. And so we have to leverage what we already have. And so warning, and I always like to say this warning message before I jump into the training, all of the things I'm gonna to say today are gonna to contradict either what you've learned up to this point or what you'll learn outside of our time here today, right? I'm gonna tell you something, you're like, wait a second, Will and Dave told me different, wait, Taylor told me different, wait, my mama told me I'm, I'm telling you what's working currently for me, right? So a lot of the strategies that I have are gonna contradict what you know. So just throw that out the window, right? Go tell your coach's coach, right? Tell your mom, I'm sorry. And so here's an example. I'm gonna tell you that you don't need to build this $20,000 website. You don't need a fancy website. You don't even need to post every day. You don't even need to grow a large email list. You don't need a vent. I'm gonna tell you all the things that you thought you needed that you actually don't need any of that in order to make sales for your business. And so how many of you sell a product or service? Give me a, a P in the chat if you sell a product. Give me an S in the chat if you sell a service. Awesome. I see some PNS. So some people sell products and services. Awesome. Now, how many of you have used Facebook or Instagram ads before? Give me a, a one if you've used Facebook and Instagram ads before. Give me a two if you've never used Facebook or Instagram ads before. And so as you are typing that in, I'm going to keep moving forward. So who am I, right? And why did they even invite me on here? <laughs> and so my name is Abu and I specialize in running ads. Now, some of you may have seen my ads before. If you've ever seen an ad of mine, give me the number seven in the chat if you've seen an ad of mine. And I've been running ads now for over a decade. I started my first ad back in 2008. This was when Facebook and Instagram first came out with ads. And at that time I was running a t-shirt company in June, 2012. And at that t-shirt company that I was running, I was in my college dorm and I was selling t-shirts, right? And the way I sold t-shirts was by setting up tables to vend. And what I mean by that is I would call my local, you know, places that were having events. I would get in my car, I would drive over to the event. I would set up my table and then I would just pray that I broke even by the end of the night. 
and I was working extremely hard. I was working 40 hours a week, selling products for 15 to $25, making 100 to 200. I thought I was balling. You know, I was like, man, I, I'm making good money. You know, I'm a college student, <laughs> $200, but I had no way of actually selling. And then I learned about this underground world of Facebook ads and Instagram ads. And I'm like, wait a second now, like, what is this? And I saw it working for other people, but I didn't really understand how to do it. So I, I put two feet in and I started teaching myself ads. And I actually was not successful when I first started. I actually lost $10,000 trying to figure it out myself. And that 10,000 was from my college savings, <laughs> which I didn't tell my mom about. So you could only imagine how that conversation was. I mean, I laugh about it now, but I don't know if she still laughs about it. She laughs about it at all. And so then the ascension came. So here I was, this company that I started with 1,500, right? Now I was making anywhere from six to 30K a month as this 21-year-old college student. And then I was being featured on Business Insider, Philadelphia Inquirer. And I thought I made it. Everyone wanted to meet this 21-year-old. That's a photo of myself and Damon John and Shark Tank, the John Legend, right? I thought I made it. I'm like, I'm about to drop out of school. And I was driving all this visibility and sales with Facebook and Instagram ads. This is how I was doing it. Everyone thought I was this big company, but it was just me in between classes running advertisements to get in front of my audience. And so here's what I learned. It's not the ads that wasn't working. It was the person running the ads. Many times when something isn't working for us, we start to blame the thing rather than us, right? Because we don't ever think, well, do I know what I'm doing, right? So many times people don't know what they're doing, therefore they don't think to blame themselves. So it doesn't matter what you run, it won't work consistently unless you know what you're doing. So learning ads is like learning a skill, like Excel, like coding. And once you know the skill, you could use this skill to monetize your own business, or you could turn around and say, you know what? I'm gonna help someone else's business, right? I'm gonna help monetize someone else's business as well. And so here's the potential I saw as a college student. The first thing was access. You could interface for the first time ever in history. Because remember, prior to Facebook and Instagram, companies did their own market research. They spent billions of dollars. And then that data belonged to them. It wasn't available to the public. And then Facebook came around and said, you know what? All this data is available to anyone, the solopreneur, like Abu, like Dave, like Will, like Taylor, right? The other thing was low barrier to entry. All you needed was a few dollars a day to get started. And then the last thing was a laptop lifestyle. That means I could work from anywhere around the world and which is what I've been able to do. I train now, I train business owners and executives and CEOs and entrepreneurs and solopreneurs how to do it themselves. And so I shared with you my first story of my t-shirt brand, but I then went digital. And I said, you know what, what does it look like if I sold a digital product? So my first ever digital product was an $18 ebook that I sold on my website. It made me about three to 500 a month. I thought I was stunting on my haters, y'all, right? I was like, man, I'm making money. I'm making three, 500 a month. Like I'm making money out here. And that additional 500 was a game changer for me because it allowed me to continue investing in myself and grow. I didn't leave my job quite yet, but it allowed me to invest in myself. And then my second ever digital product was a $20 monthly membership community. And it flopped, right? It didn't work out the way I thought in my head. In my head, I was like, okay, if I do, if I move the one over and carry over the two, you know, but it didn't work out that way. <laughs> and then I said, okay, what did I learn so far? And then I learned my third, I uh, launched my third ever digital product, which was $200. When I was at $30, uh, at $20, people said it was so expensive. And I'm like, how is this expensive? I'm giving you an unlimited array of knowledge and you're telling me it's expensive. So what I did was I took that same community, instead of $20, I put $199. And then I made the most amount of sales ever. And the reason being is because people see the value based on the, the number you associate it with, right? Like value is based off what you contribute to that thing that you're selling. So if you don't think it's worth anything, people are gonna, it's gonna reflect that on the people and they're gonna say, well, it's not worth anything. And so when you think it's worth a lot, then you, could, you need to portray that value to your audience. And then this allowed me to make 15,000 a month. Now I was in a position where I could leave my job and that I did. And then came my fourth digital product. My fourth digital product made a million dollars in sales in less than 12 months. Right. Notice how this didn't happen overnight. This was me sharpening every day. 
iron, right? Sharpening my tools, sharpening my skill set every day, right? In order, you know, the money follows the mastery. And my mentor used to always tell me that. Master something and the money will follow you. And again, even with a million dollars under my belt, I didn't, I don't, I haven't stopped investing in my education. I haven't stopped growing and learning from other people. Notice how I told you I'm part of the rec community because there's so many different people that I can learn from, right? If I thought I got here by myself, no way, <laughs> right? There was a lot of people that helped me get here, but it started with me investing in my education. So the reason why we're gonna focus on Facebook and Instagram ads is one is consumption. There's 3 billion people, 3 billion active users on Facebook and Instagram. There's only 7 billion people in the world and 3 billion of them are on Facebook and Instagram. The other thing is called the action, right? 75% of people that see an ad on Instagram, they at least stop to look at it. And then the other thing is results. There's just a high yielding results where you put money in to get uh, uh, return out. So the purpose of this session, and we're about to jump into the training, is just to share a few ways that you could think about marketing, whether it's a digital product, whether it's a physical product, whether it's a service, right? I'm going to walk you through more effective ways to think about marketing as well. So let's go ahead and jump into here. All right. <laughs> so now that we got all that out of the way, let's think about marketing. And marketing starts with our customer, right? Where is our customer? And that's the most important aspect. It's not about you. Selling is not about you. The sooner you realize that, that selling is not about you, the better off you'll be. So our customers are on a journey. And the screen that you're seeing right in here is called the customer placement map. It's something I created. And the customer placement map says, your customer is on a journey to purchase, but they're all at different stages, right? Some have no idea who you are, some are on your email list, and some are past customers. But how are you going to market differently to each customer? The number one mistake I see entrepreneurs make is they take one marketing strategy and they try to target their entire customers. And that's the worst way to make sales. That's the worst way to get in front of your audience. You need to draw this out and say, you know what? Where are my customers currently in my business? Where are my customers currently on the journey to purchase? Once you can identify where they are, it's a lot easier to create specific strategies based on the stage of where your customers are along the journey. Somebody give me an amen. Does that make sense? Give me an amen in the chat if y'all following. If you follow me, give me an amen in the chat. So once we understand our customer, right? Okay, here they are along the journey. Here's my specific strategy for them. Then, right, we can start thinking about, well, what does it look like building ads? Okay, Abu, I know my customer. I know where they are. How do I go about building ads? So let's talk about what's the first part of building effective Facebook and Instagram ads. And so this is what I like to call the building the perfect ad five steps. And go ahead and screenshot this if you'd like. And this is an ad. You see a Facebook or Instagram ad. When you click it, you go through that company's journey you go through their language and you know who they're targeting you and to their offer, that product or service that they're selling. So most people think that in order to run effective ads that, hey, Abu, I just need to know how to run ads and they'll fail. The first step in running ads is not actually the ads. I know, I tricked y'all. The first step in running effective ads is understanding what am I selling? Why is it different? What is it value? What, what's the value in what I'm selling? Who am I serving? An audience, right? Why am I serving this audience specifically? What are their pain points? What's the solution that I'm providing? What's the specific steps that it's going to take for them in a funnel? A funnel is just a series of steps in order to get people to your action. What are those series of steps? Okay, they go to the website, they click the product, they click add to cart, they initiate checkout, they become, what are the series of steps in order for them to get that offer? And then we build the ads. Notice how we did not start with the ads. And this is where most people get it wrong. Over 95% of people that I know that run ads and it doesn't work is because they start from left to right. You need to start from right to left, right? You need to start from right to left. Okay, so now that we've covered who's our customer, 
where they are, how we're gonna serve them, how we're gonna think about building our ad. We're gonna work backwards, right? We're gonna work backwards, offer, audience, message, funnel, Facebook ads. Now we get into, well, what goes into a campaign? We're at the ad level now, we're at the ad part. What should I be putting into my campaign, Abu? So here's an example, and I'm gonna showcase you an example in the next slide. So here's an example of an ad that I used to run, and I still run from time to time. And this ad, right, here's the ad on the left. And when someone clicked this ad, it took them to a website or a landing page. And on this landing page, right, a landing page, people could only opt in for one thing at a time. On this landing page says, hey, download my free ebook. When they downloaded this ebook, I gave them the free value. I said, okay, thank you for downloading it. Here's the ebook now. So this is a very simple funnel, right? Add landing page ebook. If you're still following, give me a two in the chat, right? So here's a simple funnel. I created an ad, that ad led to a website. People opted in or they purchased. In this case, they just gave me their name and their email. And now I, I've given them my workbook that I created. Okay, so stick with me because we're gonna expand upon this. So here's me giving free value. And why did I wanna give free value? Because I wanted to build trust with my community. In order to sell, you need to resonate. In order to resonate, you need to build content so your community understands, wow, I could trust this person. People need to be able to validate you before they sell. If they can't validate you in their mind before they buy, they, they won't buy. So you need some sort of validation. And what I used was a free value. I said, hey, I'm gonna give a free resource away because I want, when they go through this resource, they're like, wow, he's knowledgeable. I didn't know this before, right? So now there's a trust that's being built. So later on, I could sell something to them. And because that trust is built, it's a lot easier to make the sale. So stick with me here. So there are a few types of ads you can run. What I just showed you is a lead generation. I said, hey, I'm gonna give you something of free value in order for your name and email. You could also run ads for sales generation. Hey, come here and buy this. Engagement, reach Insta stories. So follow me for a second. So why do we use ads in the first place? Before ads, remember we did the most, right? So before ads, what we did was we told a friend, we blogged, we optimized our SEO, we vended, we spoke on stage, we did collaborations, we you know paid someone to talk about it. But then with ads, it eliminates all of this because we're using this to target our audience. So we don't need to do anything physically anymore. All we need to do is run the ad. And then that ad takes people to our website. Does that make sense? Give me a four in the chat if that makes sense. So let's talk about strategy now. So this is where, you know, stay with me now. We talk about strategy of running effective ads. So remember this campaign that I just showed you, I ran an ad to a free offer and then people uh, downloaded my ebook. So I'm thinking about, I wanna make sales eventually, but let me build trust first. And so let's say 20,000 people visited my website, 1500 click the ad, 463 subscribe. So 1500 people clicked my ad to come to my website, 463 of them subscribed because they wanted this free ebook, right? So here I am, now I have 463 new potential customers that I could go to. Remember I told you I eventually wanted to sell something? So now I decided to create something that would help solve, the, solve their problem. I said, okay, I understand that they're struggling with ads, but let me create another digital product to help them solve that issue that they're having. So I created a course around, hey, let me help you master Instagram and solve your ad problem. And I sold this for $47. So let's say 20% of the 463 people who are on our email list now bought this $47 product. 
That's about 92 people. 20% of 463 is about 92 people. So now what happens? We would have generated $4,324. Just getting 20% of those individuals to buy a $47 product. Now we're talking, now we're making money. Right? This is where we wanna be. So let's say they leave our website and they don't purchase. Guess what they're gonna see next time they're on Facebook and Instagram? An ad, <laughs> right? The reason why we run ads is because emails have low open rate. People don't buy their first time. There's a stat that says 2% of people that go to your website sometimes buy. 98% of the times they don't buy. But they buy on the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth time, right? And so the reason why we run ads is to get back in front of our audience. And this has happened to you all the time. How many times where you are shopping on Amazon or you are on someone's website and you go on Instagram or Facebook and you see the ad and you're like, wait, what is this? How did they know? <laughs> right? Give me a five in the chat if that's ever happened to you, where you've left a website and you've seen their ad somewhere else. So this is how companies get back in front of you. This is what you should be doing to get back in front of your audience. 80% of companies' revenues comes from retargeting. And this is what it's called. It's called retargeting or remarketing to get back in front of your audience. So we didn't make money by luck. We made it with intention. Notice how we worked backwards. Before we created this free value, we said, well, what can I actually sell? Okay, how can I actually help them? I could give them a free ebook. Okay, here's the ad that I created. So now when we put it all together, it looks like we didn't know what we was doing, but the whole time we knew what we were doing. So what I want you to do right here is I want you to take a screenshot of this and I want you to tag me and Rec Philly on Instagram. Again, tag myself and tag Rec Philly on Instagram. We didn't make money by luck. We made it with intention. Again, take a screenshot of this, tag us on Instagram, just so we know who's attending, who's paying attention, and if you understood that concept. So again, we didn't make money by luck, we made it with intention. And so it's about being intentional. Remember, we wanna make sales. At the end of the day, we, we need to eat, right? We need to survive, we wanna make sales. So we need to start with the offer. Remember, this example, it was a free ebook, but it could be a physical product. It could be a skincare company, right? Selling skin products. It could be a coach selling services. It doesn't really matter. It's the same structure. Why are we creating this? What's the value, right? In this case, I created an ebook for those interested in running ads because I know it could be a challenge spending money and not getting results. After we understand our offer, then we go to our audience. Well, who am I serving, right? Oh, I'm serving entrepreneurs who are at the beginning stages. Right, business owners who are struggling with seeing results, someone who has tried ads and failed but doesn't know why. Okay, why is this important to them? What does it help them solve? And in this case, in my copy, in my message, I put, what if you could avoid all the mistakes before running your next Instagram ad? Well, now you can. After running 300 Instagram ads, I've uh, created a foolproof way to understand and avoid those mistakes not only that, but to get your return on an, an investment right away, right? So what is the messaging and language that I'm using to talk to my audience? And then the funnel, right? What does the customer journey look like? When a customer clicks on my ad, what, where will I take them next? And then the ad itself, what am I going to put in front of my audience to get them interested and stop? And in this case, I use the solid background, right? I use the iPad, and it sort of I had a contrast, color contrast. Now, many of you are more creative than I am, <laughs> but I know how to sell. So again, this, you know, I try my hardest on this, on this graphic. <laughs> so now you're ready to put campaigns together. So where do we go? And what we're gonna talk about is the Facebook ads platform. So the first thing to understand is that there's three things to think about. In the Facebook ads platform, and this is what it looks like right here. Let me just 
when we're in our ads manager, we have the ability to create ads. And in our ads manager, we have, you know, campaigns, ad sets, and ads. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But when we click create ad, the first thing Facebook asks us is what's your marketing objective? What, what are you trying to optimize for? And we'll walk through an example. But to understand what the campaign campaigns are, what ad sets are, what ads are, I've created a visualization, a visual to help you understand. So the red circle expresses a community, right? So this is a campaign. A campaign is where you know people in a community live. And inside of that community are ad sets. This is where you set your targeting. So there's a big house, there's a small house, there are a house with five bedrooms, there's a house with um, you know, a basketball court. So the ad sets are the differentiators of the houses. And inside of each house are families, right? So there's a black family here, there's a white family here, there's a happy family, right? They're the different types of families. So that's how you understand anything from campaigns to ad sets to ads. And side note, if any of you cannot hear me, just click refresh on your browser. It is not my end because I know people can hear me. So let's go into uh, the ads manager specifically, right? Let's go into the ads manager and let's demo it so I can showcase to you all where we go to run ads and how do we go about creating an ad from start to finish. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll come right back to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna reshare it to my screen again so you can see my web browser. So give me a second while I do that and make sure there's no questions for y'all, from y'all. Give me one second. Okay, okay. Let's go to my browser right here. One second, I'm just trying to find the screen. There it is. So this is my ads manager right here. So in the ads manager, and let me just switch accounts. Give me one second. Let me just switch accounts. Give me one second, y'all. I'm just switching accounts. I should have had this set up, but I think I accidentally exited out of it before we got on here. Okay, so this is my ads manager screen. And right now it may look like a completely different language to you, right? It may look completely different. <laughs> and you're like, well, what is this right here? What am I looking at? <laughs> so this is the screen where you go to run ads. From here on out, what I want y'all to stop doing is clicking the boost button or the promote button. Stop doing that. That's the, actually the least effective way to run ads because you're limited on your targeting capabilities. So think about this example. Let's say you are on a date and you sit at the restaurant and you look at the menu and there's only three options to choose from. And you're like, well, I don't even eat any of this. That's like clicking the boost and promote button on Instagram and Facebook. You don't get maximized capabilities to get in front of your audience. Now, when you come to the ads manager, you, it's a buffet of options, a buffet of options where you can select different types of targeting, ad sets, um, ads, different type of images, videos, etc. The way you would access this screen that I'm on is you would just log into your regular Facebook. So if I went to facebook.com, my screen is loading. So if I went to facebook.com, on the left-hand side, there's a column called See More. And then there, you could click Ads Manager. So this is how you would access it. For some reason, my browser is loading slow. Um, so on this screen right here, here's what I'm gonna showcase to you all. So this is my dashboard for one of the businesses that I run. And when you look at this, and I'm just gonna customize my dashboard so you can see the data better. You can see that in the month of January 1st to January 31st, I spent $100,000 on ads to make $300,000 in sales. This is my dashboard. This ain't nobody else's. This ain't fake, right? Y'all seeing this, like, this is my dashboard. I spent $100,000 and I made $300,000. So that means I made a three times return on investment. 
the important thing I want you to know is that I didn't start with $100,000, right? Every time I made money, I reinvested that money back into my account. So when people tell you that, you know, and the reason why I'm showcasing this to y'all is I'm letting you know, like, I do this for real. Like, this ain't the same play. Like, I, I do this. When people say they run ads, like, no, I run ads. And so let me showcase to you what I mean by I made a little bit of money and I put that money back in. So let's go to the, the first day of January, right? January 1st, notice how I spent 1,200 and made $10,000 back. So if I spent 1,200 to make $10,000 back, what am I gonna do y'all? I'm gonna put that money back into ads because I've made almost an eight times return on my investment. So many people, if they made this amount of money, they would then, they would go to um, to a steakhouse, they take their family out, they go buy a new car, they, no, you can't do that. We're in business to make sales consistently, therefore we need to reinvest back in our business. So when I made 10K, I put that money right back in. And then let's look at January 1st and 2nd now, right, it's two days later. Now, I spent 2,600 and I made $17,000 back. So notice how I'm, I'm taking the money and I'm reinvesting it back in. I ain't taking it nowhere because I see the potential. I said, well, what happens if I spend $100,000? How much can I make out of that? And I made 300,000. But notice how I didn't start with 100,000 in my account. I started small. Every time I made money and got a big return, I said, well, let me put that money right back in. Let me see what's gonna happen. And so that's how I did it. I didn't, at, at January 1st, I didn't have 100,000 in my account, right? That I could use to run ads with, right? My, my account was, was uh, my account on the hell that, so I couldn't, I couldn't tap into that account, but my personal account, I didn't have $100,000, right? I had less than maybe like uh, 2,500, but that first uh, 1,200 made me 10,000. So I put that money right back in. And so that's what I wanna showcase y'all right? You put the money back in. And so when you're ready to run an ad, you come and you'll click this green create button. Side note, the screen that I'm showcasing you right now. So Facebook has, Facebook has been updating its backend. So some of y'all may have a different look and feel on this screen and that's okay. If you know how to use one, you know how to use both of them. They do the same thing, but Facebook has been updating some interfaces but not everyone has the newer updates. Some people still have this old update. And so I'm just letting you know now, right? Like um, it doesn't really matter which one you're using. They both work the same way. Okay, back to the training. So when you're ready to run an ad, you click create. Once I click create, I'm in the ad creation process. This means that I, now I'm ready to run my ads, right? So the first thing it asks you, remember I said, what's your objective, right? What are you trying to do here? And so we said, you know what? We wanna drive traffic or we wanna drive conversions, right? So that's what Facebook is asking us first. So let, for the purpose of this example, let's say we wanna drive traffic. So we come down here and it's asking us, well, how much do you wanna spend daily? Let's say we wanna spend $10. I got $10. Let's say we wanna spend $10. And this is an example, Rec Philly example. And then I'm going to click continue. Now I'm in the ad creation process. And on this stage right here, I'm trying to figure out, right? I'm trying to figure out when I'm here. Okay, where do I go now? Okay, I click traffic. I come down. I'm selecting my audience. Remember I told you after offer? Because before we got in here, we knew what we were going to sell. We knew what we were going to offer. Now our audience, remember that was the second part. Offer audience, we're working backwards. So now we get to select, well, who do we wanna target, right? Who, do ex who exactly do we wanna target? And so that's where we fall into this phase where we're like, okay, who do we wanna get in front of? And so we come down here, we could do detailed targeting. We could say, okay, I'm targeting anyone that may be interested in Rec Philly. So let me target WeWork because Rec Philly is like a membership community. So I'm gonna target WeWork and you know, what are my audience, you know, who are they following? You know, what are they reading? Maybe they read Entrepreneurship Magazine. Um, you know, maybe there's a startup, so I'm gonna select startup. Uh, maybe they are, you know, uh, they follow Gary V. They're big fans of Gary V. So I'm gonna select Gary V. So now I'm thinking about the psychographics of my audience. That's how I'm targeting them. 
And now I go down and I go to placement. I could either, if I leave it on automatic, it will get everywhere, right? But if I, so if I leave it on automatic, it'll go everywhere. And wait, why did it go back up? And, but if I click manual, if I click manual right here, then in manual, what happens is you get to select the placement, right? You get to select the placement of where you want your ad to show, right? You get to select, okay, I want my ad to show here, or I want my ad to show there. So that's what you get to do when you do select the placement. So we can select just Instagram, we can select just Facebook, and then I go down here and then I click continue. And then once I click continue, I get to the ad level. Again, I get to the ad level once I click continue. And at the ad level, I'm just gonna switch this account. I then put my image, my video, right? My asset. And so in this case, I could come here, I could add image and I could use a pre-existing image or I could upload an image and that's what I'm gonna do and showcase show. So I'm gonna upload an image. I'm gonna upload this image of myself. It's gonna take a few seconds to upload. Once I upload that image, I'm gonna click continue. And now I see the image right here, right? So here's my asset. So now I get to put text on it. Hey, I'm teaching a workshop with Rec Philly this Wednesday. Find out more here. And then I could, you know, find out more by clicking learn more. And now I get to the headline. So the headline I could put how this entrepreneur made a million dollars in 12 months. This'll, this'll get someone to stop, ain't it? <laughs> right, how does entrepreneur made a million dollars in less than 12 months? Then I put the website, right? Recphilly.com slash live. And then I come down here and then I'll select the call to action. I could do learn more, I could do sign up here, right? And then when I'm done, I'll just click publish and say, you know what, I'm done, confirm. And then once I click confirm, the ad will start running, right? So that's how you would go about building an ad from start to finish. So I know I covered a lot. <laughs> So what I wanna do is sort of open it up for questions that you all may have or questions, Taylor, that you want me to touch upon. So that way I'm giving the most value uh, to the community. Yeah, so much value and information so far. I'm sure everyone's really yeah. trying to take it all in and consume it just like I am. Mm. Um, let's allow people to write some questions in the chat right now. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't want to <laughs> get deeper and lose people. So I was like, let me slow down. <laughs> yeah, no. The example was great. That's exactly what we needed. So Danielle said, will this video be available later so we could go back and watch steps again? So Danielle, that's a great question. I would reach out to Rec Philly and Taylor. They'll probably give you better answers around that. I think if you're already part of their community, you may have access to this, but I would just reach out to them and ask them. I don't know if you could expand on that, Taylor. Yeah, the answer is yes, it will still live on Rec Philly's YouTube following um, this session. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Tito says, when it comes to ads, how do you know what ads to run? So Tito, remember, it's not about getting in the ads manager. It's about understanding, well, what do you want to do from a business perspective, right? Like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to sell? What do you want to create? That's the bigger question, right? So once you understand that, 
then it's a lot easier to know, okay, I'm gonna create this type of ad, right? Because I wanna sell my product. So I'm gonna create an ad that sends people to my product page, or I'm gonna create an ad that sends people to my service page or to a free ebook page. What kind of budget is good to get results? Um, so I teach ads for a living and I teach people in my, my virtual community, which is poweryourlaunch.com. But I teach them how to start with $5 a day when it comes to running ads. Again, they start with $5 a day. So I would advise the same for you all. Sheena says, so you suggest multiple ads starting with giving away something free first and a mailing list is a must. So Sheena, this is just one type of strategy. Remember I said there was a lot of different ways you could skin the cab, but like this is, I actually hate that saying. There's a lot of different ways you could do things, but this is just one way that you could do a lead generation if you so choose that you wanted to do it that route. And there's nothing wrong with that route either, right? You're building trust with your audience. How do you figure out your ideal customer? It's about the psychographics of your audience. I know you think you know your, your customer, but if I ask you, tell me your customer, you'll be like, oh, they're 18 through 28. Um, and they're male or they're woman, but that's not what you target. When you target on Facebook, you're targeting the psychographics. What are they reading? What are they watching? Who are they following? Where are they spending their time? Who are they using if it's not your brand, right? These are the questions that take research and that's how, and that's what leads to you finding your ideal customers. Um, when offering a visual art service photo video, how can I build trust digitally? How can my funnel look to bring people into my world? Um, yeah, so it may require you doing a free training, right? A free webinar, right? It may require you doing, giving something a free value away to then leave because people need to trust and validate you. You know you're good. You know it can help them, but they don't know that. So you need to give them a little piece. You need to give them a taste. So they're like, okay, I need to then invest in the full thing. How would you suggest pulling people in a spiritual coaching service in a saturated market? There's no such thing as a saturated market. In every market, there are segments, right? If there was a thing as a saturated market, the beauty industry would have died years ago. But every day, there's over thousands of beauty companies that start. You know why? Because every target, there's segments of people that are different. People are different. And so if you had that mentality of, well, how do I, you know, people, no. People may be doing it because of you, because of your story, because of your journey. They resonate with that. They don't resonate with the other spiritual co coach. They resonate with your specific journey because they are going through the same exact thing. So don't discount yourself. Stop doing that. What are your tips for running an ad for a beauty service to attract more customers? How much should we be spending? I think I answered how much you should be spending. Tips for running ads. Again, um, user generated content, run ads around people that give you content. People wanna know for beauty products, is this gonna work? show me that it's gonna work, the benefits, right? So I would focus my ads around that, Morgan. Khalil says, for people selling services, are there any different variations of getting customers? I see that you sell services, I don't know. Uh, Khalil, it's the same exact framework, right? It's the same exact framework. It works the same exact way. I used to run an agency. I used to do the service business. That's literally what I would use. After they bought the $47 product, I knew that they would spend money with me and then I got them on the phone. It's the same exact thing. So expand your mind further and say, well, how can I utilize this for my business? Um, if I'm selling something with aesthetic purpose, how do I get people to buy into that? Again, even if you're selling something with aesthetic purpose, it's not about you. What value is this adding to your customers, right? It's about your customer. What's the benefit to your customer? That's all they want to know. Before, when people buy, think about when you buy uh, Jordan, you're always thinking about, well, what's in it for me? So stop thinking as a business owner and put yourself in the shoes of your customer. What steps should we create um, for IG versus Facebook instead of the messaging wise? Um, so I talked about paid ads. I didn't really talk about posting organically because I don't really care about that. I run an Instagram page that has 56 followers. I generate six to $10,000 a month. So when I tell you that it doesn't really matter, I'm really emphasizing it doesn't really matter. But again, if you do create a great aesthetic on your Instagram, that's all bonuses. But I'm also telling you that it doesn't really matter as well. Is there a threshold budget range that really starts showing results? Uh, I heard under 500 won't do much. JC, <laughs> I'm telling you, whoever told you that, just like 
remember I told you I'm going to contradict a lot of the things you know? Just throw that out of the window. $500 goes a long way. So stop listening to these folks that are telling you nonsense, right? Again, $500 goes a long way. Please stop listening to them. I've spent $5 before and made $1,000. So stop listening to these folks. They do not know what they're talking about. You need the test. Am I saying $5 is going to work for you as soon as you No, but you need a test. You need to find an audience that it's going to work with. And so I'm telling you right now, <laughs> like <laughs> $5 goes a long way. So stop listening to these folks that are telling you 500 doesn't do much. And I'm even going to show you an example. So this is from today. This is from maybe an hour ago. This is inside of my paid community that I've run. Notice how here's someone, they spent $43, JC. And guess what they made? $499. Did they spend $500, JC? No, they didn't. So why would you listen to someone? And I'm literally showing you right now, someone, one of my students in my program that spent $43 and made $499 today. This was one hour ago. It's 402. This was at 302 PM. Right. So that was a misconception. Can this work for a fiction book? Should I give away something free first and then run? So you can for a fiction book um, or focus on your story. So run a split test. One goes to a free value, one goes directly to the product page. Is this directly applicable to artists promoting shows, announcing new projects? It depends on your strategy, Lauren. It depends on your strategy. When you're promoting a new show, there's really not a return, especially if that show is within if that show is tomorrow, right? So, and then if you're running an ad to the show, you need to make sure you own that website and then you own ticketing. Because if you can't own ticketing and put your pixel on it is the way you track sales that are coming in, then you, you wouldn't be able to do that and run that effectively. So again, it depends on your strategy and I could dive deeper into that, but I wanna make sure I get to other people's questions. Um, so yes, but it depends on strategy. For musicians, um, don't have single out. Levon or Levon, uh, hopefully I'm saying your name right. Stop thinking like a musician and artist, right? You need to start thinking as a business owner. If you're a music artist and you're, you're saying, okay, I need to have songs out. No, think about merch. Think about digital products. Think about digital services. Stop thinking as a music artist. Music artists don't make money through their music. It's 2020, <laughs> like they make money everywhere else. Their music gives them brand awareness, helps them build a loyal community, but they make the sales from other brand extensions. So stop thinking like a music artist. I'm gonna get through a few more questions because <laughs> I'm getting exhausted. <laughs> uh, thank you, Booz. Uh, I use Google ads before, not Facebook, Instagram ads. Should we use ads or IG and Facebook at one time to start. Yeah, use both Instagram, Facebook, same time. If you were marketing beats, how would you go about uh, building trust instead of just showing beats and people's faces? Again, this is something I would have to sit down and really think about. How are other people selling this? Maybe it's not selling beats, maybe it's selling your process, right? And then you sell beats later on, right? Um, how useful are Facebook ads toward driving traffic to music on streaming services? or the YouTube video, they're effective. But remember, you are not, if you running ads to YouTube or streaming service, your return isn't money. Again, if you're running ads to streaming services or YouTube, your return isn't money. Your return is just people clicking the ad and going to that page, but it's not money because you're not making a direct correlation of money right away. So again, it depends on your strategy. Um, best way to analyze data and retarget. If you think about it like a funnel, like we said, right? Um, and so this is, again, I'm trying to cover as much as possible. It's hard for me to dive deeper into the analyzing data and retarget because we'll be here for another hour, JC. Um, how do you get Facebook to track how much money you're making from ads? Great question, Dave. You need to place your Facebook pixel code. So your Facebook pixel code is a unique code that goes on your website or other platforms that then communicates back to those back to Facebook and says, okay, uh, money is being made. Okay, people are going to my website. So it, it acts as a direct link, right? So this is my website and my other platforms and this is my ads manager and it acts as a direct link 
once you place that Facebook code. And so they communicate back and forth with each other. And that's how you know, okay, sales are being made. Okay, leads are coming in. Okay, people are visiting my website. Okay, people are taking additional steps and action, but you need to place that pixel code on your platforms, on your website, right? You need to be able to place that code on your platforms. I spent a few hundred on ads, never made anything from it. I targeted my existing followers. What did I do wrong? Uh, Darian, it's a hard question for me to ask without seeing your data. I could give you a hundred reasons of things you may have done wrong and none of them might help you. So again, I need to actually be able to see your data in order to give you the most effective um, answer. It's hard, again, data, it, it, when, you are, when you could read data, you see problems in the data and why people weren't moving the way that did. Um, uh, man. Okay. How does Facebook track the money you make? I just said it. You place that pixel code on your website and it tracks that. How can freelance creative writers use this? Again, you, uh, in the mind of your customers, provide value first. In order to sell anything, Ayana, you need to be able to resonate with your customer. Why are they coming to you? Maybe you have a case study where you helped another freelancer uh, or you helped someone else and they got a big return or you help them get to the front page of something, right? So whatever that end result is, you need to be able to showcase that to the freelancer because that's all they're thinking about. What is this? What's in it for me, right? What's in it for me? What's the value that I'm getting out of this? Tips for musicians trying to get a physical product. So Khalil, this is a hard question because it really depends on you and what you want to sell and what you want to provide. You may not want to sell beauty products, right? So I would do a soul search and ask yourself, you know, what is the thing that people come to me most about? What is the question that people are always asking me? Or what's the thing that I also align with that I also want to do and provide? And so again, it doesn't have to be physical. It could also be digital as well. And so starting to think about those questions, because in the midst of that, you may find something and say, you know what, this is the product that I need to provide because I know it can add additional value to my audience. So it's hard for me to tell you, Khalil, hey, Khalil, go do this. Because <laughs> you may be like, well, Abu, I don't like doing that. And so then I'm like, okay, that's a good point. So what do you like to do? <laughs> awesome. So I know I try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and again, um, and then Taylor, you could jump on here anytime. Let me know if there are any additional questions you want me to touch upon. Um, but I really enjoyed my time here today and I enjoyed my time, you know, really diving into the training. Again, I'm trying to cover as much ground as possible because we have people that are never heard of ads, people that have heard of ads, people have uh, tried running ads. So there's just a wide variety of people. So I'm trying to cover as much as possible but you know that I could take one topic and I could spend an hour on that topic, but I'm just trying to make sure that I'm giving uh, value to everyone who is currently tuning in live. So again, I didn't want to get super technical because I didn't want to lose anybody. So, um, so again, I really enjoyed myself here today. I really enjoyed Rec Philly and the Rec Philly team and Taylor for making this all happen and reaching out to me and, you know, really uh, pushing me to do this. And this is something that, and I wanted to do for a long time. So thank you for that. And I enjoyed everyone who uh, tuned in live and people that are watching this on a replay. Again, you could reach out to me at Abu Fofana on Instagram and I'm sure Taylor and then we'll link everything in description. The last thing I wanna leave y'all with is I run a six week marketing accelerator where I teach people how to run ads for product for service-based businesses, digital and physical and services and my Power Your Launch community. Um, again, you can find out more about that. You can go to poweryourlaunch.com or um, you can find the links below here and you'll be able to go through that. And so again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I truly, truly appreciate you all. And I'll see if Taylor and Will have any additional questions or last regards as well.
That was incredible. Thank you so much. Going to do a round of applause. My final question was just going to be, how can we continue learning <laughs> from you, hearing from you, connect with you? So you just jumped right into that. Um, thank you everybody for being here. I know I myself will probably listen to this recording about five times to really let it all sink in. So I recommend that you all do that, share it with your community. Um, we will continue having rec sessions um, similar to this throughout the end of the month. So um, you can always go to recfilly.com slash events in order to see what we have coming up. Um, and you can always RSVP for that. Again, these sessions will be hosted on recfilly.com slash live. Um, we actually have a session coming up tomorrow. It's titled Payroll Protection Plan for Self-Employed Creatives um, and Freelancers. So again, just really speaking on how we can monetize and manage um, our finances and our creative entrepreneur journey from the comfort of our homes during this time. It will be hosted by Ballard Spar. Um, so I highly recommend you all check that out, RSVP, and tune in tomorrow. It will be hosted through Zoom um, for our member community. Other than that, I want to thank you again, Abu. You are a legend. You do this for real, for real. <laughs> thank you again um, for bringing us and taking us to school for this past hour. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. So bye, everybody. Thank you. Have a productive Wednesday.